Oh, Colonel. We are so fucked. Okay, so Atri Atri made a Keemstar Exposed video today. It's called Content Nuke Keemstar, okay? Ethan's video has been overwhelmingly well received as 333,000 likes. What we do here is go back, 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 back. I am but one man, probably not even the most hated man in Keemstar's life. And you've seen the length he's gone to harass me, to slander me, to rewrite history in every conceivable way to make me look evil. And frankly, it has worked. Okay, following his lengthy response to Mudahar, Ethan Klein released Content Nuke Keemstar on May 19th, 2020. This is currently the longest, most in-depth video on the H3H3 channel. It's amassed 6.4 million views, and for approximately a week, it sent shockwaves through the entire community. Naturally, this was the product of a long-standing beef between Ethan and Keemstar, which finally boiled over as a result of the drama alert episode myself and Tom showcased in the last part of our video on the subject. Rather than make a traditional response, Ethan elected to spend about 60% of the video presenting a large-scale retelling of the many mistakes and direct screw-ups that Keemstar has made going back five or so years. This was obviously included to paint Keemstar in the worst light possible before eventually making his own point. However, in some ways, Ethan does that effectively. Ethan shows a part of the content cop, revisits Tony, the man he accused of being a pedophile, and discusses Keemstar's horrendous understanding of and stance on mental health that he showcased over the past few years. I wouldn't call any of these concepts new per se. Many creators have discussed these exact topics and I think that's why they're the most potent arguments that he makes in the video. But I think that's also part of the reason that the impact of this drama was so short-lived. However, this of course will be something I revisit as we progress through the video. For now, we're just gonna focus on the actual arguments. I want to bring you up to speed quickly with all of Keemstar's transgressions of the past before we move on to his illustrious future. He told Total Biscuit, who was dying of cancer, that he couldn't wait to report on his death. He falsely accused an elderly streamer of being a convicted pedophile. Ugh. I mean, how does he ever even live this one down? I'm fucking white. I run this world. You're black. You're my slave. Understand it. I would hang the f*** out of you. First time he gets a gun, he shoots his brother. I have never heard is so mad in my life. This dude is so embarrassed that he's black. Look at this reaction I'm getting. He's so angry because he knows he's a fucking second class citizen. Which is the only reason why you want to fuck a white chick is because nobody wants to fuck a black chick. Where I have to give Ethan credit right off the bat is his coverage of Keemstar's incredibly misguided views regarding the field of mental health and how it directly led to indefensible mishandlings of Dromalert's initial Bashiverse coverage. It led to some really poor hand handling of the Etika situation that I think one could absolutely justifiably criticize Keemstar for. Keemstar's opinions surrounding mental health have led to multiple other instances of mishandling critical stories that he's covered, some of which are even discussed in later videos on the H3 channel. On top of that, Keemstar getting stories wrong like Tony and falsely accusing him of being a pedophile is still unacceptable even though it's been about five years. So naturally, this is the part of the video where I uh, jerk you off in the first five minutes just to swing a hard right turn into a 15 minute rampage unprompted how the old man Tony is actually the biggest fucking clout chaser on the platform, right? I'm guilty of that video being wrong and what I said about you, but I'm not guilty of you being trolled in 2017. If this happened once or twice, I just, I just let it go. But you've done this to me multiple times in the last six months. And I'm holding back every urge from saying just like, go fuck you, go fuck yourself. Give me all! Your money, Keemstar. No, Nick. Let's let's just not do that. Fine. So no, that's that's not the bridge I'm choosing to die on. I, I genuinely want this to be as objective as possible, and part of that is acknowledging that Ethan does a lot right. However, like his Mudahar video, he takes a good 20-ish minute video and goes over the top making some of the most outrageous fucking statements that I've ever heard. Wichita police officers believe they were responding to a hostage situation. Fuck. 
when Andrew Fitch was shot dead. Police believe the call was actually made by 25-year-old Tyler Barris. Let's get right into the news. We reached out to him and we asked him if we could get an interview with him and we did. And this is what the person that made this fake police call said. Roll it. This one really went under the radar. The first glaring flaw with the H3 video is his coverage of the convicted felon, Tyler Swatistic Barris. Ethan has been very vocal about his disdain for swatters. I mean, who wouldn't be? Talking about them on multiple podcasts, which makes it all the more surprising that he views the arrest and conviction of one as a point against Keemstar. For those of you who don't know, on December 29th, 2017, Keemstar uploaded a drama alert interview with the swatter Tyler Barris, who directly caused the death of a an innocent 28-year-old man, Andrew Finch. Keemstar, knowing that many people who would do swattings, bomb threats, and hacks from the Call of Duty community were attention seekers, he did everything he could do to get this man on his show for an interview. In this interview, he was able to get Tyler Barris to confess directly to the crime, I mean almost instantly. Keemstar also stated in 2017 that Drama Alert had aided the police in some way. When I reached out to Keem to confirm this, he clarified that Drama Alert worked with the police for both the arrest and the conviction of Tyler Barris. Of course, Tyler, after confessing publicly, would have to plead guilty, and he received a 20-year prison sentence going away for a really long time. The dude literally helped put a guy in prison, and H3H3 is here to tell his audience that this is somehow a bad thing. In fact, H3H3 manipulates the entire narrative of this genuinely good thing Keemstar has done for the community in a truly spectacular way. This one really went under the radar. But I find it really disturbing that Keemstar, the day after this murder happened, was able to get this kid on his show. Fully monetized. Keemstar cashed in big time on this whole ordeal. He also used his platform Drama Alert to promote an ongoing GoFundMe that would go on to raise $28,000 for funeral expenses, with the remainder being handed to the victim's family. If you watch the follow-up video the very next day, on December 30th, you would have seen this, Ethan. Keemstar cashed in big time on this whole ordeal. And I also, if I recall correctly, the interview brought to you by the SWAT murder was also sponsored by G Fuel. Use code Keem for 10% off of your life expectancy. Not only that, Keemstar donated $1,000 out of his own pocket to the family's fund. What a fucking grifter, am I right, Ethan? H3H3 watched Keemstar help put a murderer away for 20 years, and you targeted his sponsors for that, Ethan. But the same company, G Fuel, was right there front and center when Keemstar announced his arrest and promoted the GoFundMe to benefit his family. Keemstar cashed in big time on this whole ordeal. Now, I want to let my audience audience know that there is a GoFundMe to help pay for funeral expenses for the family of the victim. That link is the top link in the description of this video. Keemstar cashed in big time on this whole ordeal. That there is a GoFundMe to help pay for funeral expenses for the family. And I also, if I recall correctly, the interview brought to you by the SWAT murder was also sponsored by G Fuel. And I'm proud to announce right now, he is behind bars. Isn't it wonderful that Keemstar is giving this murder the opportunity to place blame on others totally uncontested? He is behind bars. But I, I didn't want to say anything until he was arrested, until he was in police custody. But I'm glad we got at least the confession. This one really went under the radar. He literally helps raise money for the victim's fucking funeral, you dick. Then H3H3 goes on to attempt to criticize Keemstar's interviewing skills when he got the murderer to confess to being a murderer, as if that makes any fucking difference at all. Isn't it wonderful that Keemstar is giving this murderer the opportunity to place blame on others totally uncontested, while still at large from the police? And can we appreciate the irony of Keemstar, of all people, to sit here and pretend to be outraged when he enables this kind of behavior all the time. If you're looking to criticize Keemstar's game day performance, you probably should have done the simple research of doing a Twitter advanced search to see what Keemstar had to say. I wanted to give like a little backstory of like what was going on with this interview and what we were doing and why we were doing it. But I, I didn't want to say anything until he was arrested, until he was in police custody. He told me that he had limited time and he had to do it like right away. So I had to rush over here and I didn't have time to prepare for this interview at all. And my main objective with the interview was to get him to verbally confess to what took place. Like that was my only goal. But as you saw in the interview, 
he verbally confessed to it like right off the bat as soon as he gave me the confession like i didn't know where to go from there he asked i asked him about you know do you have parents he said he doesn't have parents like there should have been a follow-up question like what do you mean and then the guy just kept throwing me off by not being remorseful at all or, or sorry for what took place I, w I was just like at a loss for words like my brain stopped working but i'm glad we got at least the confession. Keemstar actually took accountability for the second half of the interview, but this was all included in the video to tie into a previous segment of Keemstar doxing a creator named Smile for YouTube, as if there's any similarity between the two. In this situation, H3H3, who, let me remind you, vehemently hates swatters, in my opinion, he paints an alleged swatter as a family man. Keemstar claims that Smile for YouTube swatted him first. Smile for YouTube dude is a liar, alright? I never swatted him, he swatted me, and he swatted a basher. And even if that's true, does it really justify leaking his wife's phone number? What did she have to do with it? This is his wife's phone number. And his home address, endangering the lives of his children. Dealing with a fucking father, fucking father, 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 father. This is a man that's willing to endanger children over a petty internet beef. This entire segment tells about three quarters of a story, showcasing a pretty stupid decision Keemstar made when he docks Smile for YouTube live on stream, even going as far to get his wife's phone number and hand it to the chat. As someone who's had their own mother's phone number read on stream, I personally never would have made the impulse decision Keemstar made, but let's be fair here. I, I wanna provide the context. Over the weekend, a guy who has harassed me, a guy who has doxed me, DDoSed my streams multiple times and had me swat it, uploaded a video claiming that I was swatting him. And the video goes fucking viral. It is on the front page of fucking Reddit. And now people are accusing me of swatting people. That is fucking ridiculous. Smile for YouTube has harassed me for over a year nonstop. And if you are a viewer of my streams, you can testify to this. And I would appreciate a comment from you on this video, a testifying that this dude has literally spread my docs in almost every stream for months on end. This dude has sent multiple donations just to charge back. And I'm gonna show some of these donations, like literally 40 to 50 donations a night for the sole purpose to charge back to close down my account. This dude has literally tweeted out my fucking docs. This dude has literally claimed that he was DDoSing me and knocking my stream offline. This dude has literally swatted and harassed Basher. Basher even says on March 25th, after I did an interview with Scarce, good interview. Smile has been doxing us, swatting my mother multiple times, trying to trick us into taking large sums of money so he can charge back and screw us, and so much more for months on months. He didn't just do this to Basher, he did it to me. So he plays a clip where I'm saying that I can't wait until he's in jail. The reason why I can't wait until he's in jail is because he's a fucking criminal. Smile for YouTube is an absolute degenerate on the website who's been accused of swatting both Keemstar and Basher vs. Mother multiple times, putting Basher vs. Family directly in danger. There are literal tweets of him posting Keem's personal information and there are logs of him sending and charging back donations in an attempt to get Keemstar banned from PayPal so he'll be unable to collect donations on stream.me. While I don't support the decision Keemstar made to dox him, let me be clear, comparing this situation to swatistic, murdering an innocent person unapologetically over a $1 fucking bet in a Call of Duty game for clout in the community is fucking bullshit. To call Keemstar a SWAT enabler solely off these two specific situations and your ridiculous comparison is fucking disingenuous. Can we appreciate the irony of Keemstar, of all people, to sit here and pretend to be outraged when he enables this kind of behavior all the time? This is a man that's willing to endanger children over a petty internet beef. I mean, if you did a few Google searches, Ethan, you would have been very well aware that this was far more than a quote unquote petty internet beef. I don't consider alleged attempted murder, doxing, and deplatforming to stunt monetary gain, or, you know, putting Basher's family in danger, a petty internet beef. Would you, Ethan? This is a man that's willing to endanger children 
over a petty internet beef. Smile for YouTube has harassed me for over a year nonstop over a petty internet beef. Spread my docs and almost every stream for months on end over a petty internet beef. This dude has sent multiple donations for the sole purpose to charge back to close down my account over a petty internet beef has literally tweeted out my fucking docs over a petty internet beef this dude has literally claimed that he was ddosing me over a petty internet beef this dude has literally swatted and harassed basher over a petty internet beef smile has been doxing us swatting my mother multiple times over a petty internet beef he didn't just do this to basher he did it to me over a petty internet beef can we appreciate the irony of keemstar of all people to sit here and pretend to be outraged when he enables this kind of behavior all the time and then the guy just kept throwing me off by not being remorseful at all or, or sorry for what took place I, w I was just like at a loss for words like my brain stopped working and pretend to be outraged wichita police officers believe they were responding to a hostage situation when andrew fitch was shot dead shot dead shot dead one of the first criticisms that many had of Ethan Klein as soon as his video about Keemstar came out was that his targeting of Keem's sponsor, G Fuel, was extremely out of line even for a very critical video. YouTubers like Optimus came out on Twitter explaining their discomfort with this and how they didn't particularly care about what Keemstar had done in the past. Keem would also bring this up in his own response, where he seemed rather upset that Ethan had gone after his financial means. And another thing you did in this video is an absolute first for YouTube. You went after my sponsors! You went after my sponsors. If you think the YouTube community is happy with you right now, you, you got to be out of your mind. You have ushered in this new era where people that have beefs on each other go after their sponsors. Other large YouTubers, notably critical of the channel Penguin Zero, would come out with their own takes pretty soon after, explaining that while they felt all of the criticism of Keemstar was completely justified, the targeting of his sponsors would set a dangerous precedent for the YouTube community. The reason I'm even talking about it right now isn't so much because I care about Ethan and Keemstar having internet beef. Uh, it's actually what I think Ethan did that I think sets a terrible precedent for the entire platform going forward and could lead to a disastrous future. In Ethan's content nuke, he mentions Keemstar's sponsor G Fuel eight times, constantly saying things like, Why is G Fuel sponsoring you? They shouldn't be sponsoring you. This is kind of fucked up that you still have sponsors. How is this possible? Just implying that he needs to lose his sponsorship with G Fuel, you know? And a lot of people say, Yeah, it is kind of fucked up, but it's Keemstar, so we're fine with it. And you shouldn't be. Yeah, Keemstar's done a ton of fucked up shit that definitely deserves consequences, but taking it into your hands as like the arbiter of justice to spam his advertisers to get him to drop them. You, you don't see how that could be used against you? It's like the same thing for people who are constantly begging for the government to censor the internet because there's things they don't like on it. It's a very slippery slope that can get out of control very quickly. What Critical is saying here is basically that going after Keem's sponsors is a bad move because, while Keem may somewhat deserve it because of who he is, it's a dangerous road to go down when one of the biggest YouTubers on the platform is going after someone else's financial means just because, well, he doesn't like them. By making it a common occurrence in the online community, you will inevitably create a culture where anyone who says something remotely off-color or edgy will be targeted by those who don't like them, and their sponsors will be taken away. Sponsorships have become an increasingly important part of the YouTube business model in the past few years, now that ad revenue is pretty inconsistent and unreliable. They're a vital part of making a living on this website, whether you like it or not, and they make up a large portion of YouTuber revenue right now. Imagine if someone like Count Dankula had their sponsors targeted because of their relatively edgy sense of humor, or other more political people like Armored Skeptic. Their wallets would absolutely be hurt if a group of people that didn't like them harassed their sponsors, telling them that they're hateful even if they clearly aren't. In response to some of this criticism, Ethan would put out a tweet saying, Keemstar wears G Fuel hat in every video and has G Fuel on his desk in every video. It's as much a part of him as his beard. It's part of his identity. I didn't go after any of his other sponsors, but this one is part of who he is. If G Fuel dropped Keemstar, it's Keemstar's fault. A lot of people here would take issue with his response, being disappointed with the way he acted because of the influence that he has in the community. You basically are saying it's okay to strip sponsors from any content creator if you're beefing with them, not only impacting the person, but everyone under that sponsor and the innocent company themselves. So fucking stupid. 
Yes, it's totally Keemstar's fault that he got dropped, despite the fact that you mentioned it in your video. Just ignore the elephant in the room that it's your own fans that got him dropped, not Keem. G Fuel likely never watched your video, employees were doxxed and flooded with demands to drop him. Keem has done fucked up shit, but nothing you presented was new. What was new was implying people should attack his sponsor, which is a bad precedent since anyone can do that now. And the pressure's enough, they could drop Ethan. Same way G Fuel just did to Keemstar, the same tactic. What Ethan's done is he's opened up this extremely dangerous can of worms. Now I'm not here defending Keemstar, I'm not trying to white knight him and be his chat mod, deleting mean messages and licking the piss off of his toilet seat. And I hate that he even have to clarify that, I think it's pretty clear that I'm not defending Keemstar, but the internet's already going in this way where if you don't agree with everything Ethan did in his video, all of his methods, then you're just defending Keemstar and you're a bad person. Charlie would receive some backlash for this, but the response was mostly positive and a lot of the community agreed with everything he had to say on the matter, something that I'm definitely definitely on board with. Criticism makes sense, attacking someone's actions and their character makes sense. I am in no position to defend Keemstar and his actions, because while I find him to be a pretty likable guy in terms of his personality and the general brand that he has, he's also an asshole who has done a myriad of pretty questionable things to other people. Does Keemstar deserve to have his sponsors taken away? I'd say that's a hard question to answer, because while I do see Ethan's point that G Fuel is a large part of Keem's brand and if they drop him, then it is his fault and not theirs. I also think that maybe Ethan was kind of hypocritical here. Keemstar claims that Smile for YouTube swatted him first. Smile for YouTube dude is a liar, alright? I never swatted him. He swatted me and he swatted Basher. And even if that's true, does it really justify leaking his wife's phone number? What did she have to do with it? Keemstar has a girlfriend. He has a daughter. He has a lot of people online who rely on him. He runs tournaments. Do they deserve to be shafted financially because of Keem's actions? I'd say probably not. But obviously, this only seems to apply to Ethan's logic when it's going against Keemstar, in which case it's justified. But when Keem defends himself from a doxer, oh well, that's fine. Unfortunately, you don't get to have it both ways. Once the precedent is set, well, it's set. For those of you who aren't already in the loop about this and didn't see it on Twitter the night of the release of the content nuke, G Fuel did actually drop Keemstar. Or, as he put it, they went their separate ways. Something that I was pretty disappointed to see. It looks like I may never get the chance to use Code Keem. Pretty soon after this happened, people began targeting Ethan's sponsors, and successfully got multiple of them to drop the H3 podcast altogether. All it takes, really, is a few people tweeting at these companies to get them to drop their clients. They don't care about the truth. They only care about making their brand look good, which Charlie stated pretty well earlier. Ethan obviously isn't a racist person. He doesn't hate other people. His use of the dreaded N noun was not done in a derogatory way. He said it in a pretty acceptable context, but companies like these don't have the time to explain to the general public why they stayed with the guy who shot off the N-bomb rapid fire in a podcast. They just want to look good, so they dropped him. It's not right, sure, but it is easy for people with influence to weaponize, and I definitely consider what Ethan did to be extremely irresponsible. I do not look forward to other people in the YouTube community trying to get the sponsors of those who they have a personal beef with taken away. And make no mistake, this video was not some noble crusade for the YouTube community or anything like that. This was a personal attack on because of his constant ragging on Ethan and the hate that he has sent his way. Not to say that this isn't somewhat justified, but some of the people saying that Ethan is doing this out of the kindness of his heart are ridiculous. This is the accumulation of a two year long feud between two people. Not a hit piece to show the community what kind of guy Daniel Keem is, because I mean, we, we kind of already know. Oh, and the people on the H3 subreddit posting about how everyone should try to get Keem's sponsors taken away are downright pathetic. You people are losers in every sense of the word. Now, in the interest of being fair and not making it look like I'm a simp for Keemstar, let's just remember that Keem himself doesn't have much room to talk about people's sponsors or sending hate mobs after them because, well, he's done it himself multiple times. Yeah, wet after my sponsors! Today we're gonna be looking at Soar Gaming. Now, Soar Gaming is a channel here with 618,000 subscribers. Many of these teams are big, they have lots of sponsors, and at the same time, they're being racist, homophobic, and trying to convince other children to kill themselves. That's right, encouraging suicide. Like, this has never happened before, but it's happening now. And they are sponsored by Elgato, Loot Crate, Scuff Controllers, and Cyberpower PC. You have ushered in this new era where people that have beefs on each other go after their sponsors. Why are these sponsors sponsoring such a team? I'd imagine this doesn't need much explanation, but here we can clearly see Keem going after the sponsors of someone else who he didn't like. He's encouraging people to go after their financial means because they're, uh... Hobophobic. Could you say that one more time, Keemstar? They're hobophobic? Hobophobic. Yeah, because they're hobophobic. And some of you will probably say, oh, 
Well, this is so old. Maybe Keemstar has changed since then. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt. And honestly, I'd be willing to give him that. But let's not forget that just a few months ago, he was rallying for the deplatforming and demonetization of another YouTuber, JayStation. I'll let you make of that what you will. Overall, I think that Ethan's video would have been a hell of a lot stronger if he had omitted the constant references to G Fuel, and that my opinion of him would be a lot higher if he hadn't been so adamant about that point on Twitter after the fact and chosen that hill to die on. Just disappointing. The segment that bothered me most in this video was the huge chunk dedicated to the creator, Etika. First of all, I'd like to reiterate that Keemstar's stance on mental health from this time period was fucking appalling. If you don't believe me, look no further than the three sips of beer tweet that's become quite the meme recently. I think Keemstar's handling of the situation is definitely open to criticism and should be criticized. In fact, some of this segment does that excellently. For example, the fact that Keemstar posted the mental hospital he was attending to his millions of followers in 2018 was absurd and interviewing him when he got out of the mental hospital in 2019 was clearly a big mistake on Keemstar's part. The part that I and most other social media influencers had an issue with was the insinuation that Ethan clearly made about Keemstar killing Etika. He knew he would get lots of views, and he did, with great cost to Etika. Keemstar's greatest moment comes when he asks Etika in a manic state, why doesn't he just jump off a cliff? If you really think about it, then why live? Just yeah. jump off a cliff. Just yeah. jump off a cliff. If, if it's just a simulation, who cares? Of course, hypothetical, but it is quite a coincidence when you consider that only 51 days later, that very same YouTuber jumped off a bridge to his death. While I'm sure that Ethan will brush this entire allegation off as simply speculation, based on his track record of recent replies, there's a good reason why so many people walked away from the video thinking that was his underlying intention. It also doesn't help that the very next clip showcases FoozyTube, and a very select line was chosen out of all the possible clips that would be applicable to the mental health argument. FoozyTube is another YouTuber who is a frequent target of Keemstars. He also suffered a manic break. And here he is talking directly to Keemstar. Hey, I'm just telling you as a man at 28 years old what I feel. You made me want to commit suicide last year. I wanted to kill myself because of all the attention you gave me. I rewatched videos going viral after the attention you're giving me now of you saying, Boosie is the biggest piece of shit egotistical asshole on this earth. I have bipolar and depression. That what you put into my head made me want to kill myself! If you're looking for an explanation or any added context, there is none. That's all in another video. He literally just plays a clip of Fousey screaming, Keemstar makes me want to kill myself, following the Etika story, and then nonchalantly moves on to the next subject. What you put into my head made me want to kill myself! But ladies and gentlemen, I am here to tell you that Ethan Clyde is a liar! This stuff makes me sick for a multitude of reasons. Naturally, the context that's missing is a good place to start. Notably omitted from the video is the statement delivered by Etika's own mother. She stepped up to defend Keemstar when he was initially being blamed, stating that Keemstar is not responsible for Etika's passing, and she also gave Keemstar some pretty good advice down there at the bottom. There's also the messages from Etika's girlfriend sharing the same sentiment from both before and again after the content nuke dropped. This is the part that really fucking annoys me. Etika's ex-girlfriend Alex was trashed on social media for sharing her opinion in defense of Keemstar to the point where she felt forced to either delete the tweets and private her account or face an oncoming hate mob. Imagine your ex-boyfriend dies tragically nearly a year ago after a successful fucking suicide attempt and you now have to be subjected to prepubescent pieces of shit who watch one guy's YouTube video and feel the need to tell you that you're wrong about why he killed himself. Imagine a hate mob telling this girl that she's not grieving correctly. Imagine fucking arguing with someone who would know, saying that Keemstar did reach out to Etika behind the scenes, and your response is to send her some screenshots of tweets that people were spamming all over the website that night. Then, another close personal friend of Etika came out in complete support of Ethan. Now this is spiraled into inadvertently pitting the loved ones of Etika against each other. Now look, I know this wasn't Ethan's goal, but Jesus fucking Christ, is this fair to anyone? Why the fuck 
fuck would you make Etika the focal point of your video that was designed to get back at Keemstar for accusing you of pocketing money from the game Payday 2? Why does this dude's legacy need to be subjected to this? Why does this dude's tragic suicide need to be weaponized and debated on a year later in YouTube drama exposed video? This just feels like a cop out because he's gone. He's unable to speak for himself. Etika is unable to interject and let people know what he was feeling or pick a side. It's an allegation that H3H3 felt comfortable to walk right up to the door with because Etika's not here to tell him that's not true and nobody knows exactly what was going through Etika's mind. He tweeted out, Etika fans are tweeting at me saying I shouldn't be streaming Red Dead at a time like this. He's not my friend. I barely speak to him. I'm worried, but there's nothing I can do. And it's Red Dead too. Sorry, but I'm streaming it no matter what. Keemstar says, I actually like Etika. I don't think he's evil like Fousey, but he's definitely manic as fuck. He always acts like this. Nah, not like this. Actually, yeah, just like this, Keemstar. <laughs> I mean, I mean, yo, it's, it's, but you know, Keemstar, you can't be mad at him for saying that, bro. He hasn't been around. It's not like he's a fucking fan. Keemstar literally didn't know of my existence until like, what, only a year ago with the whole CND swatting thing. So don't be mad at Keemstar for this, guys. Like, no, I don't see why y'all are being mad in a sense, because it was a very manic thing that I did. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not in the ward anymore, and I don't have any crazy medicine to take. There's some anxiety pills for two weeks or whatever. So it's like, and it's not necessarily something to be mad at. Don't be mad at Keemstar. It's all right, man. Like, I'm not willing to, I'm not holding anything against this nigga. And I don't give a fuck. I'm not sucking his dick either. Fuck Keemstar. But I mean, but fuck it. Why be mad at this nigga? Etika says, Drake is coming. Stay tuned. Oh, shit. Really? It's a Fousey joke. Oh, it's a Drake. Oh, Drake and Fousey. Oh, oh, ha, ha, ha. That wasn't funny. I shouldn't be making fun of that. You know what? I know fuck being politically correct. Fuck being politically correct. But you know what? Suicide is a serious thing, man. It's a serious thing. And jokes about suicide shouldn't be made, you know? Like, I had a friend who was also in a suicidal position at some point earlier this year. I was dealing with stuff. I don't think I have to go into too many details about that. I think some of you might already know. It just feels disgusting that the entire impact surrounding the death of Etika has been reduced to a bullet point in a video called Content Nuke. Keemstar did not kill Etika. Etika did not kill Etika. Clown emojis did not kill Etika. Mental illness killed Etika. And I think it's wrong that people are using a man's tragic death to articulate a point about how Keemstar prioritized clicks over a person's well-being. That same point could have been highlighted in an identical fashion by taking a look at creators like Fousey or Basher, as Keemstar's history of botching mental health related stories is vast. If Etika, Etika's mom, and Etika's ex-girlfriend have not placed blame on Keemstar, then I don't fucking care if H3H3 does. The next two videos released by H3H3 were kind of a mixed bag. The second video was by far the best video in my opinion, which provided multiple arguments arguments against Keemstar that were pretty valid, some of which were actually new and, for the most part, indefensible. Unfortunately, it's also the video where he doubles down hard on the last two points myself and Tom both just critiqued, particularly his response to the sponsor backlash is really satirical. Because I criticized G Fuel, which nobody should go after people's sponsors if they're inhuman fucking scum. Let me address this head on. I am not someone that supports going after somebody's sponsors to try to cancel them for something bad they've said. G Fuel is as much a part of Keemstar's identity as his beard. He has it on his head in every video. He's got it on the desk in every video. It's very much a part of his identity. How am I supposed to criticize Keemstar and not address the fact that, that G Fuel is on his desk at every time in, in, in the hurricane of destruction, there's always G Fuel sitting there on his desk. How am I not supposed to talk about that? I don't think I have to explain to you why how am I not supposed to mention G Fuel is a fucking stupid response. In regards to Etika, H3H3 says, It's so cheap to try to boil down my entire 46 minute video to me saying you killed Etika, which is a point that I never even made, let's be honest. It's a perfect straw man for you to dismiss the entire video by responding to an argument that I never even made. If I thought you killed Etika, I would be going to the police and not making a YouTube video. He calls the Etika argument a straw man, despite walking right up to the door, which I'd say seems to be in bad faith. H3H3 also goes for a big gotcha on the Onision story, where it's very clear that he had no idea what he was talking about or his interns did the research on that one. Fuck it. I'm going to interview Onision and give him a fair chance to defend himself. Are the victims actually victims? Where's the proof? Basically, Onision has like some web series where he like rates teenage girls. Where's the proof? I do not deserve 
this hate. It's very clear he wasn't talking about the web forums from 10 years ago. That's a complete misinterpretation of his argument. Let me address this head on. I am not someone that supports going after somebody's sponsors. The SWAT murder was also sponsored by G Fuel. I am not someone that supports going after somebody's sponsors. Use code Kim for 10% off of your life expectancy. I am not someone that supports going after somebody's sponsors. Sponsored by G Fuel. How am I supposed to criticize Keemstar and not address the fact that, that G Fuel is on his desk at every time in, in, in the, the hurricane of destruction, there's always G Fuel sitting there on his desk. How am I not supposed to talk about that? It's so cheap to try to boil down my entire 46 minute video to me saying, you killed Etika, which is a point that I never even made, let's be honest. He knew he would get lots of views, and he did, with great cost to Etika, which is a point that I never even made. Keemstar's greatest moment comes when he asks Etika in a manic state, why doesn't he just jump off a cliff? It's a perfect straw man for you to dismiss the entire video by responding to an argument that I never even made. Of course, hypothetical, but it is quite a coincidence when you consider that only 51 days later, that very same YouTuber jumped off a bridge to his death. Which is a point that I never even made. This drama was definitely one of the most quickly developing stories that I've seen on YouTube. It seemed like from the time Ethan announced his video until two weeks after he, to our great surprise, posted a podcast episode where he watched Gokunaru's video in full, it was a non-stop roller coaster where it was pretty unclear who, if anyone, was going to come out on top. Ultimately, the only real winner is the small commentators making videos about it and collecting ad revenue from their multiple hour-long explanations and criticisms of the entire thing. The unfortunate thing about the release of our video is that we weren't able to cover some of the things that would happen after, which doesn't really ruin it, but it does allow commenters to leave obnoxious statements where they feel like they're saying something profound when really their opinions are unfounded and a waste of time. Nick tweeted out a few of the funniest comments, and I figured I'd take the time to sort of debunk a few of them right here, or rather, make fun of them. This didn't age well, and it's only a few days old. Imagine working on part two when part one has already been thoroughly and hilariously debunked. Just gonna throw this out there, but you should probably delete this video now. Ethan's taken the criticism and debunked everything in this video by now. Watch his newest podcast episode, where he watched Gokunaru's video live. This video holds no real weight anymore, sorry. I think this next guy fell on his caps lock key and forgot to stand back up again. This absolutely did not age well. Turkey Tom gets a pass because this was made before the latest podcast addressing everything in Broken Arrow's video. However, Tom, if you believe you were wrong in any way, it would be best to make an update video to any misinformation you may have provided here. It is a three hour video, but TLDR, Shoe Nice takes full credit for removing the video. Yeah, more on that Shoe Nice part later, but I wish some of these people had given me more of an explanation for why the video aged poorly, considering how everything we said in it is still correct as far as I can tell. It was not a retreading of the Gokunaru video, we did include some of the points that he had used. For example, the one about Willie. Osman, but we also talked about Pro Jared, which happened after the video Vigilante, and is something that Ethan has not addressed to this day. Ethan didn't respond to our video, he did allude to possibly him talking about it on an episode of the podcast at a later date, but he never addressed a majority of what we had to say. As for what was hilariously debunked, um, Ethan disagreed with some of Gokunaru's points? Does, does that mean that everything he said is void now, because Ethan disagreed? Are matters of opinion meaningless once the person who you have an opinion of says that they don't agree with you? No. The answer is no. But really, if you watch our video in full, I think the only part that aged rather poorly was the part about Leafy is here, which we didn't per se get wrong, but it probably would have been helpful for us to also show the Reddit post that Ethan talked about on his podcast, where it showed that Leafy was pretty much being just as bad as he was. But the purpose of that part wasn't to paint Leafy in a positive light necessarily, it was rather to show that Ethan wasn't acting very well at the time. If you'll remember, one of the main points from our first video relied upon some circumstantial evidence where we talked about how many believe that Ethan had tried to get Chris's video taken down, and went over everything that played into this theory. During the podcast released a few days ago, Ethan acknowledged this theory, and even agreed that he could see why someone would feel that it was removed by him. 2019. Yes, the, the evidence is definitely, I, I see where he would draw the conclusion, but I will say that, um, that no, I'm not responsible for the video being taken down. I mean, circumstance, I mean, if you look at the circumstance, it was up for a year, the video had settled. Why? I, I, I mean, ultimately, why would I have it removed after it was all settled and obviously renew this whole conspiracy about like censorship? I mean, <clears throat> it doesn't make much sense to me. 
but the circumstantial evidence is, is clearly damning. But I will say that, uh, no, I didn't have anything to do with it. On this subject, all caps and a few others had this to say. However, Tom, if you believe you were wrong in any way, it would be good to make an update video to any misinformation you may have provided here. It is a three hour video, but TLDR, Shoe Nice takes full credit for removing the video. And Ethan Klein's response to Gokunaru, they actually contacted Shoe Nice and a few of the other people who Gokunaru had more or less painted as those who had been negatively affected by Ethan Klein. Listen, he could have done that whole video, Ethan. He didn't have to blow your head off and then throw an imitation on my son at the end. Mm -hmm. It almost looked like my kid killed you. Mm. Right. So, I mean, I never, I mean, I was just like, dude, can you edit it? But it already blew up. I don't want to sneeze. <clears throat> <laughs> Wait, so you, at, you talked with him? Yeah, oh yeah. Right in the beginning it came out. And everybody uh -huh. like uh, mediocre and it just is like, dude, I'm not going to watch this. And no, no, you got to watch it, dude. The entire thing was somewhat uncomfortable. It kind of felt like Ethan was using Shoe Nice to say, hey guys, look, I'm not being bullied. You watch Gokunaru's video, I feel like the situation with Shoe Nice was abundantly clear. I think that he's desperate for fame and to make money off of YouTube, and while Ethan says that Shoe Nice isn't some hopeless alcoholic, I don't know if I buy that this dude is all there. As of this interview, he said he's been sober for 30 days but he then discounts treatment for alcoholics and even jokingly says that it's not real. This entire thing just felt very off to me and I, I, I didn't like watching it. I know Ethan wanted it to be some kind of happy-go-lucky get-together where they proved that they were all friends and didn't get the video taken down, but instead it came across as forced and uncomfortable to watch. The most interesting thing comes at seven and a half minutes in when Shu says this. Shu, <laughs> so it was you, you reported his videos to YouTube and got them removed. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. <laughs> I said, dude, you know, you should have just came and asked me. So, Broken Arrow, I reported your video on the main channel the second time when your idiot buddy did it, and I'll keep doing it for the rest of my life. <laughs> I don't know if it completely makes sense to me that Shu had the video taken down, and I'll explain why. If he wanted this video removed, he likely would have wanted it taken down shortly after his release when he saw it, rather than a year after it had already been up. It doesn't make sense that if he wanted it removed, it would get taken down months later when two other videos were also removed, right after YouTube themselves unveiled a new harassment policy. Timing is just too perfect. Oh! Never mess with somebody that has nothing to lose. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> so what did you tell your YouTube bro? Don't forget to subscribe to Shoe Nice. Uh, Zach said I could throw that in. Sh subscribe? Yes. What channel are we subscribing to now? <laughs> Which one of your 50 channels? <laughs> <laughs> it's always been sh it's Shoe Nice 22 forever now. Okay. That Shoe was nice my 20. big mistake. I think we talked about that. Ethan asked Shoe twice why he had it taken down, or what he told his YouTube rep, which I'm honestly not confident he has in the first place, considering how he struggles to keep a channel over a few thousand subscribers. But each time, Shu didn't answer the question and instead rambled about eating toilet paper and went on other unrelated tangents. <laughs> <laughs> Shu, what do you tell your YouTube rep when you report his video? Um, this is usually just reporting and flagging just to get somebody's vid shut down. Never done it in my life. I hate doxers. I hate people that send the pizza to your house, the people that swat somebody. But no, this was more personal. And I tried to tell this dude. You know what I mean? He looks like some kind of a a, a, a bird on a fence, all on meth. You know, <laughs> just, just leave me alone, gonk. Fuck out of my life. <laughs> Ultimately, this explanation wasn't really much of a debunking of the theory like many have said. Not only that, but isn't it possible that Shu would have ulterior motives for claiming he took the video down? Considering the amount of attention Ethan has been getting from Keem and his fans over supposedly having Gokunaru's upload removed, it's not unlikely that Shu would claim he had it taken down just because of the attention he would get because of that. A little fucking update to this video, um, Shoe Nice has now come out on Twitter and claimed publicly that he did not actually have the video taken down and he was lying. So, I don't really know if he's telling the truth. I don't know, if, maybe he was telling the truth the first time around, but, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and say that Shoe Nice's word is, is pretty null and void because, uh, well, he's constantly contradicting himself and... Uh, frankly, I just don't think we should take him seriously. I don't want to say that Ethan acted in bad faith here, despite Shu having no proof that the video was removed, but it, it, 
it doesn't come across very well from the podcast. That being said, this podcast wasn't all bad. I have to commend Ethan for finally responding to the video instead of pretending that it didn't exist, as well as actually sitting down to watch it point by point and give responses to all of it. I could nitpick it to death, but there's only so much I can really ask for. I'm glad he was honest with the community about it and he was willing to have a discussion about all the criticism about him. He owned some of it, he disagreed with other parts of it, and that's all great. But there are some questions left unanswered for sure and criticisms that can be made of it, but I'll leave most of those for Gokunaru as I know he's planning his own response. Ethan showed some good faith to Gokunaru as well after the podcast, tweeting out, at Gokunaru, like I said in our podcast, I understand why you made the video and I don't hold any grudge against you for it. I wish you well and lots of success. This was definitely nice to see. I could speculate as to whether it's sincere or not, but he seems to be exercising a lot of genuine emotion here, so I don't really have room to take issue with it. He did the same to Mudahara, some ordinary gamers, which was very wholesome to witness. Great moves, Ethan. Keep it up. Proud of ya. This chapter in the H3 Legacy seems to be coming to a close for now, and I'm glad to see that this Battle of Titans seems to be ending on a somewhat happy note. That being said, we're not letting him off that easy. So Gokunar was, was at the time a small creator that had this viral hit, the death of H3H3 production. There's further conspiracies uh, that I was the one responsible for getting the video removed. It, it, I, I see where he would draw the conclusion. But I will say that, um, that no, I'm not responsible for the video being taken down. But the circumstantial evidence is, is clearly damning. But I will say that uh, no, I didn't have anything to do with it. And, um, uh, obviously somebody typed it in on this laptop. I agree with that. Um, I don't, I don't know who it was. I mean, a lot of people use this laptop, so. Uh, it may have been me. I don't know. But, but I don't, but I didn't tell her to remove your video. I could tell you that for sure. Although I, I will give it up that, that the evidence is strong there, circumstantially. Um. Yada yada yada. So at the end of the day, what was this drama? Ethan uploaded an anthology retelling of every single thing Keemstar has ever done wrong on the platform, which is part of the reason the drama died so fast. The dude elected to read a list of the man's flaws rather than just get to the fucking point with his own exposed video, in an attempt to not just clear everything up exactly, but to make the most damaging video humanly possible, which I'd say he succeeded in. I want to bring you up to speed quickly with all of Keemstar's transgressions of the past before we move on to his illustrious future. It would be the, uh, the present dumbass. He told Total Biscuit, who was dying of cancer, that he couldn't wait to report on his death. He falsely accused an elderly streamer of being a convicted pedophile. Oh. <sighs> I mean, how does he ever even live this one down? I can only get upset about a situation so many times, especially one that has shown up in so many exposed videos in the last five years, including my own, where the identical arguments are present before I get numb to the situation. Ethan Klein acts like the only reason that Keemstar gets away with this stuff is because he's not held accountable. Well, that's just a load of shit. This dude gets canceled almost bi-monthly. He's absolutely been held accountable. The problem is cancel culture doesn't work the way you think it does. Your form of accountability made him lose like, what, 100? thousand subscribers in the span of a week and he's already started to gain again. This will be a negligible loss in a few months and I'm pretty confident Keemstar is probably going to be an asshole too. Creators Keemstar's size can never be cancelled. The only way to truly damage him is to deplatform him, convince him to no longer upload, go for his monetization, or go for his sponsors. And that last one is the one you did, Ethan, and that hits him where it really hurts. But even that backfired as you allegedly lost more sponsors than Keem did. All Ethan had to do was backtrack on that point, but his ego got in the way. Now, not only did that ruin his entire narrative he was pushing, but I feel pretty comfortable saying that the sponsor war eclipsed his actual arguments and overshadowed the entire video. It'll be interesting to see how this plays out going forward. One of the biggest points myself and Tom try to drive home is that Ethan does not care until things affect him, and this video is the perfect personification of that. Only now, when Ethan's ready to acknowledge what Keemstar has done to him, does he suddenly remember some of these stories that have happened over the course of eight years. I mean, the man's been on your fucking podcast. You didn't think to ask any of these questions back then? These are stories that Ethan sometimes has never commented on. Stories he's never rushed to help anyone out with. Where was Ethan last year when the Just Destiny situation happened? If you think Ethan Klein gives a shit about any of these people that he's defending, it's simply not true. That old man Tony's story is being used the same way Tommy NC 2010 was, back in 2017 when Leafy was the target for bullying an autistic man. It's, it's stupid, honestly, that we've all gone this long giving these these channels a pass who are cancerous i'm serious but you gotta you know draw the line somewhere 
at this point it's literally just bowling and honestly i want to thank tommy for actually you know making the statement and be like hey this is ethan it's me tommy nc 2010 you defended me back in 2016 then you made a promise to me you would come on my show and basically what happened was you snubbed me what happened why'd you snub me man did you just forget about me i've dm'd you a bunch of times so what happened ethan what exactly happened? <coughs> if you honestly think that Ethan thinks of any of these situations as more than a bullet point on his exposed video script, you're lying to yourself. How is G Fuel still sponsored this guy, by the way? G Fuel brought to you by false pedophilia accusations. <laughs> I, I actually want to give Gokunaro a lot of benefit of the doubt here. Then why live? Just yeah. jump off a cliff. Just yeah. jump off a cliff. If, if it's just a simulation, who cares? Of course, hypothetical. But it is quite a coincidence when you consider that only 51 days later, that very same YouTuber jumped off a bridge to his death. A lot of stuff I'm pointing out, like now that it's gone like viral and everybody thinks it's like such an important video, it's important for me to talk about these issues and set the record straight. But on a personal level, I understand why, you know, he would try to manipulate things. But I find it really disturbing that Keemstar, the day after this murder happened, was able to get this kid on his show, fully monetized. Keemstar cashed in big time on this whole ordeal. And I also, if I recall correctly, the interview brought to you by the SWAT murder was also sponsored by G Fuel. Because he, he goes, look, I'm just trying to make a good video. People aren't gonna watch it. When you have a million plus subs, then you understand that you have more responsibility to, you know, say things straight or to have more care. Like obviously now I wouldn't go make a funny a video on Jimmy Braxton, that'd be insane. Timmy. Timmy. Sorry. Timmy B. Because one of my questions for you is how do you fucking afford all that shit? Because you were driving like fucking fancy ass cars all the time. You got this big beautiful house. I'm like, how this motherfucking G Fuel ass drinking fuck afford all this shit? <laughs> like, I know G Fuel doesn't pay that well. Goddamn. They they take care of me. They're good. <laughs> well, I never see what that, that G Fuel hat. I never see what that, that G Fuel hat. So it is becoming something of an epidemic. Something that I said is bad for the whole platform and not just with sponsors. It's something anyone on the internet can do and it's something that's happening right now. There's a massive thread on 4chan that's constantly growing with people targeting big YouTubers and targeting their ads. It's basically a fucking hit list, the main three being Philip DeFranco, iDubs, and H3. And they're trying to prove how much power the people have over these YouTubers they don't like's lives. And that's the point I was making in my initial video. When you show these this group of people, these bad actors, how much power they can have by just getting enough of them together to go to an advertiser for someone they don't like, it's a disaster for everyone on the internet. Because it's not just sponsors. They can do it to Patreon. They can do it to PayPal or AdSense. They can do it anywhere. All it takes is enough people with this same narrative, like this guy is a bad person, to have them dropped. So... At the end of the day, what is there to say about Ethan Klein? It's been more than two years since the beginning of this downward spiral for his reputation, and since then, quite a bit has changed. We've gone all the way from Ethan is a great guy, to Ethan is someone with some character flaws, to Ethan is someone who has been corrupted by fame and greed, to Ethan was never a good guy in the first place. Ultimately, my opinion from part one is pretty unchanged. I think a lot of the hate towards him is pretty unjustified, but that being said, I also don't think that he ever really cared about the YouTube community and simply used it to his advantage for personal gain, particularly during the FUBA situation. Nick covered this a lot more in our first video, but I've come to the conclusion that the reason the fun died so quickly is because the clients were never passionate about it in the first place, and while they were definitely grateful for what people did for them during the lawsuit, ultimately they didn't appreciate it enough to continue funding it, whether by their own means or through a fundraiser. We slam this bitch, dude! Yes! We won the court case! Yes! I never thought we'd be making this video. I swear to God, it felt like this would never happen. It was a year and a half we were waiting for this. And I'll tell you what, through all the grief, all the, all the drama, man, now I'm so happy we did it. Because this is a landmark case, not just for us. But seriously, the wording that the judge put into the opinion uh, is going to strengthen fair use 
across YouTube. Fupa had so much potential just a few years ago, and now would be a major deterrent to those who abuse the copyright system to hurt creators and make money. It is pretty admirable that they decided to stick out of the lawsuit instead of just settling out of court for some unknown amount of money and essentially letting Haas win. Because in the end, by sticking through it, their court case did set a pretty important precedent for transformative content that will affect other YouTuber lawsuits for years to come. And I definitely don't support Keemstar's constant wild speculation about the amount of money that they raised or where the money from the Payday 2 DLC went. To anyone with an IQ above freezing, it's pretty clear that Daniel is not out here to tell the truth, nor has he ever been. If he doesn't like someone or wants to make money, he will fake narratives about them to make money. A few years ago, he and Zoe Berger manufactured an entire controversy about her supposedly sending nudes to 14-year-olds, which of course never happened. And he and Zoe absolutely admitted on an episode of the Baited Podcast that the entire thing had been a work. There was just no news that week, Keemstar wanted something to talk about, so he created a controversy out of thin air. He then talked about it on Drama Alert, and used his own podcast to talk about it, and raked in thousands of dollars off of an issue that didn't need to exist in the first place. Whether or not you admire his aptitude for business and ability to create a dialogue out of nothing, and then profit off of it is up to you, but it's undeniable that when he doesn't like someone, or wants money, he will lie about them just to rake in some cash. He'll also dox them if he can justify it in his head in some weird way. But ultimately, my biggest takeaway from Ethan's video and his behavior over the past few years isn't that Keemstar is not a virtuous person. Because I already knew that and I feel like most of the YouTube community did. That's why Ethan's video and any video about Keemstar that comes out post Content Cop will fail to take him down or cancel him. Like a cockroach, you can throw him against a wall, step on him, spray him with raid bug spray and you can drop a nuclear bomb on his head. Ultimately, he will peel himself off of the pavement and keep chugging along. The biggest takeaway for me was that Ethan really isn't that much different than Keem is. He twists narratives to fit his own agenda, he spreads misinformation about others and feels no remorse for it, and he's willing to use anything, even those who are extremely morally questionable, to fuel his personal internet beef with someone. Do I think he's a bad guy? No. Do I think he's a piece of garbage? Ethan, you are a piece of fucking garbage. Garbage! No, I, I, I do not. But I also don't think that he's very honest. And until I see a continued pattern of the opposite outside of one two hour long podcast, my opinion will be largely unchanged. Ethan Klein, I wish you the best. I think the best way to end off would be to reflect on who the winners and losers are. All things considered, I don't think I'd award H3H3 with a W. Myself and Turkey Tom set out to make a deep dive on Ethan Klein about a month before this drama took place, and for that reason, the series is significantly more H3H3 centric. That being said, you'd have to be crazy to think that Keemstar walked away from this situation with any Ws. While I don't think Keemstar writing number one news source in his bio means nearly as much as this community seems to think it does, I will say the man has an enormous audience, and with that audience should come a certain amount of responsibility. There is no reason why he should still be butchering Predator allegations as recently as this year. With that being said, I'd say YouTubers didn't win this either, as now the future for sponsorships on the platform is certainly in question. How about the H3H3 detractors? Did they win? Well, no. And I'd like to speak to that specific sector, and explain exactly why you guys don't win here. If you're one of those guys who constantly fills the comment section, about about how you hate H3H3 and how he changed and how the podcast is now so bad and you wish the old H3H3 would come back. Bro, we need to have a heart to heart for a second. The podcast has been out for four years. If you don't enjoy it, it's probably time to find another fucking podcast. The God's honest truth is that making scripted videos is completely fucking different than making a three hour podcast. If you're the kind of guy who gently caresses the side of your computer monitor as you watch your favorite creator day in and day out and you think you know them because they're so relatable, you probably don't. Fair warning, Ethan on the podcast is very likely who Ethan was the entire time you've been a fan of him. You just found out that there were various aspects of his character that you now don't like, and it's literally the definition of don't meet your heroes. You can't sit here and honestly expect someone to remold their entire personality because they don't reach the expectations that you yourself set for them. I absolutely sympathize with Ethan here, because it's clear that people have yet to grasp this simple concept. It's time to grow up. 
up. So to summarize, the drama was incredibly toxic. I'm glad it's over, and I hope everyone cuts their losses and moves on. If there's one thing the community does in the wake of this situation, I just hope we all can agree to let Etika rest. I think it's important to remember him, and valid points can absolutely be made about his situation. But that's not what this felt like. Watching this unfold felt like a tug of war between two giant man-children using this dude's suicide as a bullet point of a drama argument. And if nothing else phases you in this situation, I'm hoping this does. This dude was an entertainment legend, and I honestly feel like he deserves better. It doesn't even feel like it's been a year since he went missing, but in all actuality, we're just a few days away. I reached out to a friend of mine, Lord Vega, who assured me he could take care of something really special. I want to be buried at the YouTube headquarters in LA, and I want my tombstone to read no bitch niggas. That's all. Don't put my name on it. Don't put when, when I died. No. No bitch niggas buried in front of YouTube headquarters. And I want a silver coffin. And at the fucking funeral, the only song that I want to be played is Anime Pussy by Joseph on Deck. You dudes better not betray me. Better if she was an anime, bro. Anime, pussy, and anime, 